Welcome to the Derby debrief from Rams TV. Owen Bradley uh, with former Derby captain Sean Barker alongside here to reflect and bring you reaction to a Derby victory on Boxing Day. The Rams have won at Wigan by a goal to nil. Curtis Nelson's header, the difference between the sides, it means it's seven wins out of eight for Derby in League One. The Rams just six points off top of the table, Portsmouth, with a game in hand as well. Been a really interesting Boxing Day in the League One promotion race. We'll show you uh, all the results and the table a little bit later, but the headline really is that the top two drop points and everybody else one. It is tighter than ever. Coming up, you'll hear from uh, Paul Warren and from Ryan Nyambi after his uh, new contract was announced yesterday as well. But we will start with Box as always. Um, in many respects, it was probably Derby's best performance of, of the season, but in the end, they, they were hanging on or at least grinding it out a little bit. How, how did you see the game today? Um, probably game plan worked a treat. I thought every single player played their part. Um, first 45 minutes we were dominant, we didn't give Wigan a sniff. The only complaint would be that we didn't make more of the opportunities when they arose and 1-0 was always going to be difficult going into the final 10 minutes. But if you ask any proper centre-half, they'll be <laughs> delighted that it was 1-0 because there's no better time to show what you're made of and to defend the box and we did it superbly. The two centre-halves were outstanding once again and all in all everyone um, gave their all to, to put in a very assured performance against the team that have done very well at home this season. So a bit of everything, the pressing was good, the detail was good, the final third kind of uh, confidence was there. We defended both as a group um, and in the defensive unit oh so well and we thoroughly deserved the, the three points. Uh, we were teasing you saying your, your highlight was probably Sonny Bradley <laughs> looking like he'd broken his nose uh, r right at the end. But th there was a steal about Derby today and I think you saw from the celebration sort of the satisfaction and, and what it meant to the players to hang on. Yeah, we, we've had a few, I don't want to say complaints, but a few um, choice words about our performances of late. We've, we've won games and, and we've looked comfortable in those games, but we knew performances had to pick up. I thought today's performance was showed a bit of everything, showed a bit of metal when we needed it, showed the detail of and, and some of the quality we possess. I thought attacking in that first 45 minutes, um, you know, Wilson was bright, Mendes Lang was bright once again, Barkhazen making th a threat in behind. But at times th there was the other side to us, which, which I really enjoyed. And, and we talk about Sonny Bradley coming on the pitch. like. That's, that's your job for a defender to come on the pitch for the last few minutes, put your head where it hurts. Obviously, he lasted two or three minutes, came back off the pitch, they bring Eldron. It's, it's, it's a collective, and I thought every single player played their part this afternoon, and I'm sure it's going to be a performance that the manager will look back on and say, this is what it takes, this is what you have to do. You controlled large spells of the game, you didn't allow Wigan to play the football that they wanted to, you made it difficult for them, but when you had to, you, you all dug deep to, to make sure the three points um, came back. And I, I saw the reaction of Nelson cashing the group, hugging each other, going over to celebrate with their fa away fans, and that's what it means to pick up a big th and valuable three points. Seven wins out of eight for Derby is some record. They closed the gap to the automatic promotion spots as well with this 1-0 win at Wigan. Let's get some reaction from the DW. Here's the boss, Paul Warren. Yeah, good. I thought we played really well. Um, thank all the fans who got behind the lads. A good Christmas uh, performance. The lads justified my trust in them, so that pleases me no end. And I thought it was the, possibly um, our best overall performance. I said loads of times that I think we played well in games and in parts of games, but apart from the last six or seven minutes when they threw everything at us and we had to stand up and be counted, apart from that, I thought we had pretty good control and dominance of the game, and uh, I thought we deserved our win. What did you like about the performance then? Uh, I like the fact that they, they, the lads took the detail. It's, it's difficult to play against Wigan, the way they uh, recycle the ball and don't come through the middle of you and always want to switch it. And So they understood the press, which um, uh, is a bit to take on at times, possibly, uh, our attention to detail. So I liked that. I liked our energy. I liked our... Uh, confidence on the ball um, and I liked when called upon we could do the ugly stuff there was a few balls going in at the end and um, I think it would have took some goal to uh, across to beat Cash or Nels today they were pretty colossal at the back so that I really liked and then all the little stuff that I buzz off the, the hard running from Collo up top uh, and some really good play first half some really good one and two touch play that you know if it would have culminated with a goal would have been something else so um, yeah I'm really I'm really pleased it looked 
as much of uh, my team as I've ever seen it. So uh, that pleases me. And the goal, I know it wasn't directly from a set play, but it came back out to Tom Barkhouse and put the ball in and Curtis Nelson headed it in. It, great header from him, showed real desire to get on the end of the ball. Yeah, uh, he was fired up today, um, to say the least. And, you know, I think the keeper made a great save off... Uh, Kane just before that it looked like it was in from where we were so yeah really good the only disappointing thing and it's not disappointing it would have made my blood pressure better was we just needed that second goal and we didn't get it and there was I think that's fair to say we had a few opportunities and we just didn't take it and you know but I still thought we got what we deserved today a clean sheet a win uh, really pleasing in a, in a weird way though not winning by more those one nils away from home you saw the scenes at the end where everyone's sort of pulling together how big can they be in the long run yeah crucial uh, wins a win I mean in fairness I know everyone's buzzing but there'd have been even more buzzing if it was 6-0 so uh, I'm not thinking that everyone's dancing going we love a 1-0 no one loves a 1-0 everyone loves a 3 or a 4-0 but um, I just think that the, the, the characters you want from your team to be successful and we are trying to you know catch the team at the top so we are and we obviously played with a different system today. We were virtually old school 4-4-2. I just thought we needed a bit more threat at the top of the pitch. And in fairness to Connor and uh, Birdie in the middle, they covered um, you know, some distance uh, working hard for the team. But a 1-0 win is great. You know, A clean sheet gives the back line a real confidence and away from home. Um, it's a tough place to come and it's the start of our little... Um, uh, triology, whatever the word is, that's not the right word, but the three games that like they're all proper games, uh, and we'll know a lot more about you know where we're going to end up after these. Word on the fans today had a, a cracking support behind that goal. Yeah, great. I didn't know if we won the toss or not. Um, I said it on a previous interview, but the fact that we were shooting towards the fans' second half was good. I appreciate everyone's effort, um, and to come and watch your team win on Boxing Day, they're, they're proper days out. We were talking about it on the way here, like when I'm not in football, which you know, it could be next week or next year or whatever. But when you're not in football, I'll still go to a game on Boxing Day. So if you ever phone me up, go, oh, do you want to come? Do you want to meet me at Rochdale? And yeah, yeah, I'll come. No, getting out of the house on Boxing Day and watching any sport is great. And to watch your team play and win, and I, I, I can say this because I don't normally say this, but I thought they were pretty amazing today. They really played with a heart and a, an energy which I um, was thoroughly proud of. I suppose you would like to bottle all this up then and, and take that into Oxford. It's a quick turnaround again, another again, and another big game. What are you sort of feeling now ahead of that game? Well, I knew that we couldn't pick the same team in three games. It's just, um, unfortunately, with the dynamic of our uh, squad, I don't think we can. So we're going to have to change it, but it doesn't become weaker. It just becomes different. So we need to work out, um, you know, we'll watch Oxford's game. We'll watch the two previous to today. So we'll watch that and see how we think we can stop them first and foremost because they're a good team and how we think we uh, can beat them because we, we turned up today, I said to the lads beforehand, we haven't turned up for a point, we've come here to win. This is, you know, get as many wins as you can and if on the way you lose a few, then so be it. So we'll probably shuffle the pack a little bit. Um, but there were some amazing performances today and I didn't really want to make a sub. There was, you, know, you don't know if you make it worse or better or... All of a sudden, I thought when they win the ascendancy, we'll have our legs gone, and then we have a spell. We think, oh no, and it's so. All in all, we'll pick a. We'll see the lads in the morning. Um, come through this game, show them the good bits, and there's a lot of them, uh, and build them up with a smile on their face for Friday night. And hopefully, if we perform at that level, we might uh, have a positive result. So um, yeah, that's our plan. That's Derby boss Paul Warren. More reaction to come from the DW to Derby's 1-0 win at Wigan. I know he kept saying nobody enjoys a 1-0 win. The man next to me absolutely <laughs> adores them. Um, and sort of fitting that a defender got Derby's only goal, Curtis Nelson with his second for the Rams. Yeah, it was, um, he was outstanding once again and it was a, it was a brilliant header. Um, Barkhazen did really well down the left-hand side, put a wonderful ball into the box and it was up to Nels to meet it at the right time. Um, get the flight of the ball and put it in the back of the net. And we saw Tickle just a few moments before make the save from Wilson. So, delighted that Nels got the goal. Uh, again, I thought the back line were, were outstanding. Nyambi coming and, and fittingly was was very good in that right back spot, especially when Manaman came on, who was a real threat and cuts inside the pitch and makes it difficult. So, I think I think Paul was an attacking player. He, he didn't enjoy maybe the, the, the darker side of defending the box and... I understand from a manager's point of view, it would have been nicer to, to get the second goal and make it more comfortable for the attacking players. They always want to get the goals and get the plaudits in the final third. But for a centre-half, 
you come to life with 10 minutes to go when your backs are to the wall, when you have to defend, when you have to make blocks and you have to survive that, that uh, barrage of, 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 uh, of a threat and, and pressure from the opposition. And that's, that's what we did. And we did it ever so well. So the celebrations weren't just for the three points. It was because you had to hang on, because you had to fight for your life, because you had to defend the box oh so well. And we did that, and that's where the, the excitement, the um, exuberation comes as soon as the whistle goes, because you've survived it, you've managed it, and you deserve the three points. We shouldn't gloss over, I think, how well Derby played in the first half going forward. On the front foot, they were winning the ball back high. Some lovely sort of one-touch football. Um, and Sam Tickle ha had some good saves to make. I mean, Joe Marsmith didn't make one, that's the other side of the coin, but Wigan's <laughs> goalkeeper was their, was their best player, and that tells you something, doesn't it? It does. He made two or three really good saves, and we weren't clinical enough as well at the same time. We had chances to make it more comfortable. If we'd gone in at 2-0 at half-time, it would have been what we deserved. We had a couple of glorious chances just after half-time as well, and you knew in the second 45 minutes they were going to have a spell, but we limited that spell to five minutes here and there and ten minutes at the, at the end. In general, we were dominant, and Paul picked up on it there. I think it was the detail. The detail, when to press, how to press, the energy in that front three. For the first 45 minutes, the back line didn't have that much to do. I think Cash made two or three really timely interceptions and tackles, but it was only really when the legs started to go that little bit and they, they had a little bit of joy <coughs> when they made substitutions. In general, we controlled the majority of the game, even though we didn't get the second, third or fourth goal that was maybe there for us so all in all it was it was a all-rounded professional controlled performance which really didn't give Wigan who are a good football inside the decent home side any sort of chance to gain momentum and control of the game so that's why it was so good. Uh, yeah Derby are only the fourth side to win at Wigan in the league so far this season and, and just sort of looking ahead to Derby's next two games there's only two days rest and then Oxford and then two days rest and then Peterborough, and that game could be massive given where the two sides are on the table right now, and that may change again a little bit uh, with the games on, on Friday. But I suppose that is the challenge from, for the players and uh, from the manager with how he deploys them over the festive period is you have to look one game at a time, surely. You do. Uh, we, we've, we've obviously got over the first hurdle with, with Wigan, or a tough, tough side to, to go and get a three points away from home. Um, we now go into two very difficult games but for me I know I've said it lots of times I do believe we've got the squad to make rotations and to make changes and not suffer a loss of quality or um, you know a major uh, disruption to this team <coughs> we, we we have the players we have the impact players we have players that you can probably bring on for the last 30 and make an, a, a, a significant difference to this team and we've got strength in, in depth so I do feel we're going into this period full of confidence We've picked up probably the best performance of late. Um, we've got the three points, which is seven wins out of eight. And all of a sudden, we're looking at the, not the top six of how to stay in there. We're looking at the top two with, what, three points, six points off maybe the top uh, team in Portsmouth. We've got a game in hand on them. All of a sudden, we're looking above us because of the momentum we've taken over the last two or three months. And, and again, our performances haven't been perfect, but we've still picked up results. And the confidence we've had from them even more confidence performing like that against Wigan away from home. We go into the last two games of this festive period in, in control of, of what we want to, to get from these three games and, and the belief that's going to be there is going to be staggering. Let's get some more reaction from Wigan. We can hear from Ryan Amby back in the side today after signing a new 18-month contract over the festive period. First of all, I'm really, really happy that it's done and um, I'm just obviously excited and um, I'm happy that I've obviously got an hour but a future at Derby. Um, it was always the case when I first signed that the gaffer said I've always wanted to obviously stay here long term. And obviously, it's a big club and we want to get back to the Championship. And that was always the plan when I first came. To cap that off with a win today, clean sheet on the road, don't really get much better than that, does it? Yeah, 100%. You know, it's not an easy place to come to. Um, we've got obviously today is a tough game. We've got another, another um, two games coming up that are tough. And, um, you know, you can see the scenes at the end, everyone's really happy and excited and obviously they get three points and that's all it's about. What did you make of the overall performance today? To be fair, I think we played really well. It started off well in the first half. Um, you know, we moved the ball well, um, defended well. Um, obviously, second half, last 20 minutes, obviously we had to hold out a little bit. But, you know, football sometimes, that's how it is and um, I thought we done well. 
Yeah, I think it's safe to say you showed a different side of your game today. First half, pretty dominant. They didn't have a shot on goal. Second half, they showed the grittiness of the defence. So the side did show today that they can mix and match, which is always a good thing. Yeah, 100%. You know, um, we're trying to be consistent in, in those aspects of the games, both um, going forward and defensively. You know, I think we've got the, this is the best defensive record in the league. So, um, you know, and obviously we've got a good number of goals that we on our side. So, um, you know, we can do both. The defensive unit does seem to be getting stronger and stronger almost every game. There must be a real confidence among the back four that you almost like it almost feels like you're never going to concede at some point. I think it's the you know the, the, the partnership and connection that we have. And the, you know, um, it's a real it's a real solid group, and I think everyone complements each other on the pitch and obviously off off the pitch, and that's and I think that helps. Not much rest. Quick turnaround. Oxford away next. How's that feel? Quick turnaround in the legs. How are you feeling? I feel alright to be fair. Um, obviously, it's my first game back after four weeks. Um, you know, we'll rest up and recover two days, and then we'll go again. It's football, you know. There's Ryan Nayambi. Right then, here are the results from Boxing Day in League One. Leighton Orient beat Charlton in the early kickoff. The real drama came later in the day. The leaders, Portsmouth, lost at Bristol Rovers. A last minute winner from a certain former Derby player, Luke Thomas, consigning Portsmouth to just their second defeat of the League One season. Peterborough denied as well by a pair of equalisers in the second half from Reading. So the top two both dropping points. There were, however, uh, wins for Bolton, who got an 89th minute winner against 10-man Lincoln. Derby won, as we know. A victory as well for Stevenage, pretty comfortably against Northampton. For Oxford, who got a 95-minute winner uh, to beat Cambridge by two goals to one. And Barnsley, still just outside the top six, they won as well, uh, went into a 3-0 lead against Port Vale. A little closer than they would have liked by the end, but they hung on to win. This is what it means for the League One table. The Derby stay fourth, uh, but they are just six points behind the leaders, Portsmouth, and two behind second place, Peterborough, with a game in hand uh, on both of them. Uh, Bolton stay above the Rams, uh, and they're only outside the top two on goal difference. It is now really tight from Portsmouth down to Barnsley, who also have a game in hand uh, on the leaders. Plenty could still change over the next couple of days. And at the other end, uh, Reading uh, doing their level best to get out of the relegation zone. Um, Cheltenham uh, have really had a resurgence as well under Daryl Clark. They are now just at three points from safety after an awful start to the season for them. We'll have a final word from uh, Sean Barker before we go. Um, it's not so long ago that everybody was talking about Portsmouth as runaway winners of League One, Sean. And look, there is a still a long way to go and they may find their form once again. But I asked you before the game about how tight it is in the top six and, and it's even tighter now. It is and, and it's a real shame that in the last few moments of, of a couple of the games the results didn't go our way with Bolton um, obviously getting a late uh, winner as well as Oxford but the pressure is continuing and I think is it Portsmouth's just sec second defeat of the season? Mm -hmm. It shows you how well we've done of late and seven wins out of eight it's us that are the, the confident team us that are collecting more points than anyone so we're looking above us rather than maybe just trying to cement the top six but it is it is tight there's going to be lots of twists and turns but at the end of this Christmas period we'll have a really good idea of what this uh, team is capable of what the the players um, are, are capable of over the second half of the season so all in all it's been a good couple of months and long may it continue uh, Box, thank you for your company as always. Yes, a very good Boxing Day for Derby County. We are back, remember, on Friday night, another away trip for the Rams away at Oxford United. It promises to be a very interesting evening. Join us for that. There's more reaction to this game on the website if you want it, dcfc.co.uk. But for now, from me, Box, and the team, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.